Well, if you listen to the mainstream media or government authorities, they insist there is nothing for us to be worried about regarding the radiation from Fukushima. But we sent a crew out earlier this week, and their reports have been showing us an entirely different story. Jakari Jackson recorded really high spikes in radiation levels on the uh, San Francisco beach, as well as they've continued to travel up the coast, and they're still above normal levels of radiation there. And of course, we're the only ones that are going out to report this for you, and this is probably the only place that you're going to hear about the spikes in radiation. So joining me from Eugene, Oregon, is Jakari Jackson. Well, Jakari, thank you so much for calling in. Now, you guys have come across some really dangerous levels of radiation out there. Haven't you been concerned about your safety? Oh, yes, definitely. When we first got out here, we didn't know okay. what to expect. We went to Surfers Beach, which is just a little bit southwest of San Francisco, where the viral YouTube video was shot by a citizen journalist. Now, he found excessive levels of radiation. Also, various health professionals, Geiger counter makers themselves found excessive levels. And when we went out there with our Geiger counter, we found excessive levels of radiation over 10 times what is considered normal for that particular location. And we were out there talking to the various people. Some people were aware of this. Some people weren't. Uh, there's many types of speculation. Uh, was it from Fukushima? Was it various other things? One of the ladies told us that there was some toxic waste dumped out there years back. She thinks those barrels have gotten loose and that may be one of the things driving it. Whatever it is, it's very serious radiation in that level. Now, as we've been traveling, we've been finding uh, less levels of radiation, nothing near as high as what we found at Surface Beach, but there is still a health concern in that particular area. And that's why we'll be going back there in the next few days in that, uh, that same region. Right, and that's very interesting because all of the, the charts that showed the plume, the toxic plume, it said it's going to be kind of coming from the north down to the, to the southern co there area on the west coast, but you're actually finding that it's, the radiation levels are decreasing as you go farther north? Yes, the uh, more north we go, we find not high, uh, not high levels of radiation still maybe in excess of what's considered normal. We're using the Geiger counter and the CPMs, the counts per minute. Now in Surface Beach, where the high levels of radiation were, when we found them, uh, 300, about 372, they say the norm for that area is about 30. So from 30 being the normal to what we found, 372, 374, that's a very high reading. Now, as we've been going more, uh, north, we've been finding readings between 50, 60, 40, in some cases, just a period of difference place to place, but we haven't found anything as high as we found down south in uh, California. Right. And of course, like as you mentioned before, th 30 is normal. Have you guys gone to any fish markets? Have you tried testing out any food that you, any sushi? Yes, we've, uh, <laughs> we have various readings, nothing uh, alarming, which is very good for the locals and the various people we've talked to, but we tested tuna, we tested sea crabs. Now, one of the things we've been encountering is the lack of bluefin tuna. And one of the shop owners we talked to while we were still in California said he doesn't carry bluefin tuna because it carries uh, high levels of radiation. And he was aware of this as a shop owner, so he doesn't carry it. So it's good to see that people know about this. They're aware of this and they're taking steps. Even the fishermen we talked to today, not too long ago, uh, a little bit south of here, he was telling us that he's aware of these things and he doesn't want to catch those capture those kinds of fish and definitely not sell those to his customers. Right, and you actually ran into some fishermen who I think they'd been there like 40 years and said that they actually saw some glowing uh, jellyfish. Yeah, we talked to several of the various fishermen there at Fisherman's Bay south of here. We're in Eugene, Oregon, the home of the, the University of Oregon. We were south of here today. And we talked to various fishermen in that area at Half Moon, excuse me, not Half Moon, Fisherman's Bay. And they told us they had seen some strange anomalies. One gentleman told us that he saw some Fukushima debris come over here, some debris from Japan. And I asked the gentleman, how do you know that this is from Japan? He says it has Japanese writing. We also talked to fishermen. They said they've been catching jellyfish, to, which to them looks strange. They say the guys we talked to have been fishing for nine years, four years, respectively. And also uh, other people who saw other anomalies, such as a gentleman we saw on a beach there at Fisherman's Bay. He said that he was walking the coastline, as he does every morning, a few months back, and he saw, I guess you call it disintegrating starfish. And I asked the gentleman how recent ago it was. He said, he gave him the time a, a while ago. He says he hadn't seen that recently. But people are seeing the effects of these, these things, not just this, but the conjoined gray whales and also the cancerous bald eagles as far as Utah. Wow. Well, you guys are definitely on a whirlwind road trip right now to find these spikes in radiation. No one else is reporting on this. No one else in the media, no authorities are out there. Where are you guys headed next? 
Next, we're going to go to Portland. We'll do some check-ins there. We'll go to the Columbia River, which is one of the most polluted rivers in North America. And then we're going to go back south to California. We'll go to McClellan Air Force Base and also some other areas before we go to our final destination, San Diego, then come back to Austin, Texas. Well, you guys be safe out there. We're definitely very thankful that you're out there doing this real news to let people know the dangers that are out there. But, of course, you guys, please be safe. We will be safe. We definitely want to expose this. And as we talked to the gentleman we uh, spoke to today, Tyler, live on the Alex Jones radio show, he's thankful that we're covering this case. Like you said, you can't get this news anyplace else. All right. Well, thank you, Jakari. Right, thanks, Leanne. All right. Well, that's our crew out there getting the real news for you. And it looks like we're going to have to hope that Obamacare covers all of the radiation cases that are probably going to be cropping up all along the West Coast here in the future. Now, if you want to continue to get more truthful news like Jakari Jackson's reports there from the West Coast, please go to Prison Planet TV and become a subscriber. We've got tons of reports, the nightly news. You can get the Alex Jones Show live, movies, rants, the books. And we are still running that special where if you sign up for an annual subscription, you can get five months free. And as always, you can share your username and password with up to 11 people at the same time. So that's pretty awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you here Monday, 7 p.m. Central. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other members of the fluorine family that are added to Western water supplies are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the people that drink it. So the question is, why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We developed Fluoride Shield to be the highest quality, highest standards because I use it every day and my family uses it every single day. Let's take a closer look at the ingredients that make up this special proprietary formula. Tamarind has been celebrated for its ability to immobilize toxic fluoride residues, while zeolites have a long history of attracting and holding toxic compounds. Interfulvic acid, an excellent cleansing agent. Then we added the highest quality shilaji, a rare compound that is collected from the high mountains of the Himalayas. We topped it all off with the powerhouse herb cilantro, that is intended to mobilize fluoride and other dangerous compounds for removal from the body. And the final touch to energize this formula is our proprietary nascent iodine. And as always, consult your physician as well because that is important. And finally, Fluoride Shield, Survival Shield, and all the products at InfoWarsLife.com grew out of my quest to try to find the very best compounds from God's cornucopia to protect myself and my family. And from our research, I believe we are bringing you the best, highest quality products. And you have that commitment from Alex Jones and the entire InfoWars crew.